Yo, dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days. Coming to you from the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California, White Scars, secretly easy. Y'all, here he is looking his freshest. I'm going to show you guys here in a second how to do all this. But first, cheers. Big shout out to everyone out there who subscribed to the channel, but also, it's Orc. October, guys cheers to all that yo we got the new freshest orc tober designs in the swag shop hereticswag.com we got the pain boss the war boss the Watane clan does indeed right again and i got a brand new custom big mech design in the works let's do this thing so here we go well hold on a second cheers i said uh, let me get that sip we're gonna just start the show with dark neutral gray from monument pro krill now this is just a solid gray Anyone can do this, guys. The model is prime black. We just sprayed it gray. Okay? But this is a neutral gray. And we're going to start shifting it to the cool side of things. We got this color called light cool gray. And we're going to mix it fitty fitty with the dirty paint water of the dark neutral gray. Now, literally, you can do this with any colors you want. The only thing that kind of matters if you can introduce a bit of a coolness to it. That'd be like my, my nitpicking. You could do this with black and white if you want, as long as you put a drop of blue in there. Okay, now what we're going to do is a standard Xanthio highlight top down. And admittedly, this uh, suppressor might not be the best display piece for like how that white armor. Uh, but it's what I had. So, you know, what? we're going to do our due diligence on this guy. We're going to make him look as fresh as we can. Just start building up the cool gray. Remember, his armor is supposed to be white. Now, normally what I like to do is create a lot of drama. By leaving a lot of the dark tones the mid tones behind and just pop it on that highlight if you do that too much on a model that's white on a model that's yellow certain types of colors then it's not yellow and it's not white so my goal is to get as close to that edge as possible because i do want to bring some transitions in there i just don't want a basic ass white white scar model I want there to be some flow. I want there to be some drama in the shadows. So now what we're going to do is reset the airbrush. Go back in to the neutral gray. This is the next level painting system, guys. Dark gray, 50-50 with the cool gray. Now back to the cool gray 100p. Lay this down. Same thing. I'm going to lower the PSI, thin it down a little bit. Start introducing those highlights from the top down. Shooting straight on the leg. Bring it down on the hands. Now, it's looking real white here, but that's because the light is really washing it out i'll just a light later it's not even close to white guys <clears throat> all right so that's the situation it's still cool gray very bright gray but i will tell you from experience my objective isn't to actually paint an opaque white on this model with the airbrush my I, my goal is to bring white to near white with the airbrush but i'm gonna let the paintbrush do those hyper edges because we got to bring those fresh lines into the model if it's all white, how do we highlight from there? It's the brightest it gets, right? So as you can see, now that I've adjusted the light after some stuff is dried, you can see he's firmly in the gray department, very light gray, not white, which does gives us room to brighten the model further because we are layering very transparent coats of bright gray on this model. We're just gonna build them up, let them get a little bit more opaque, achieve opacity. But when we bring white out, we're never gonna actually hit opacity. We're going to let the paintbrush do the talking. We got that bowl titanium white. A lot of people use inks for this. There's nothing wrong with that. Inks are amazing. Uh, this color just is, is really good. So I have no problems with it. Thin it down a little bit. A little water. A little flow improver. I use both. Uh, flow improver really helps here. But getting that white really thin helps. Remember, pro tip when you're painting with white guys, always keep the tip clean. Ancient Chinese technique. So just shoot in. It's very thin. It's very transparent. It is not even close to opaque. The light will make it look whiter than it is, but as it dries, it will, you know, mat itself down. It will become less vibrant. You're going to be able to see through it a little bit more. We're going to just do this one or two times to really build those whites in, but you can see what I'm talking about is I want drama. My goal isn't to paint a white scar model, just spray them white. Get the out of here. You know, I want there to be something to it. Like, I, don't, I bought an airbrush to have fun, to flex those airbrush muscles, and we're going to make this dude sing. Now, there's lots of ways to do uh, white scars in the past. I think I'd, I've done a, a warmer workup, you know, where the arm is warm instead of cool. You can go anywhere you want with this. We're just going with that cool style, that cool gray over that neutral gray to that pure white. 
mm, snapped some fingers, painted some details in, guys. You don't want them literally reds, more neutral grays. We're keeping the palette really simple so you can, I can show you what I'm doing now. I got a number two sable brush. And what I'm doing is I'm glazing in some highlights. Now, I do have glazing videos. You guys have seen it before. If you just search on my channel, glazing, or if you're on Patreon, hit the tag for glazing. This is really, really, really thin white. Okay, and then we removed some of the excess moisture. And what we're doing is kind of sketching in some highlights. These are fatter lines than I normally would do, right? Because they are going to dry. They're going to be a little bit more muted, a little bit more subtle. And what I'm trying to do is build off of what we did with the airbrush rapid fire bring up another level of opacity here but it's not actually opaque as it dries it will still be much thinner than it looks here it's the glazing game guys i'll do this maybe one or two times until i'm happy with what i have because we always got to take it to 11 before we wash it back down to 10 same deal you can see right here we're just gonna rapid fire let's crank it mm. hyperspeed make it look its best but you can see if by just doing a few coats with the airbrush first and then cheating in some glazes with a paintbrush. I mean, you could just say, hey, you know what? That's the white. And I have painted white scars that look exactly like this. And I've done nothing further to the armor and been stoked that they look like that. That they're just electric white grays, some clean edges. That makes me happy as a motherfucker, you know? But I want to show you guys all the ways you could do them. So he's looking good. We just blocked in some more colors, some more details, just rapid fire. We're really focused on the armor for this video, but I will show you if you wait till the end of the video, I'll spoil some stuff. Gamers grass kit bashing. We're going to be using that Vallejo earth texture like we did in the last video. And we're just going to pow, put a little column on there. Throw some pumice in there, but don't worry guys. At the end of this video, I will do a beginner's guide to camo cloak. Hey, real quick. We got the multi gray. We got the solvent, the Mr. Hobby oil washes advanced technology i haven't used the gray before i used it in a test run and what i've determined is the gray will give you kind of a dusty quality it will get into those areas if this was a pure white model like i bet you could spray paint a model white and throw this on there and get an interesting result uh, but what it's going to do for our model is kind of desaturate it a little bit it's going to add a little bit of a dust level to it it's going to give it the the look of being in a urban you know ruined war zone and it is stunning in real life i don't know if it's going to come across in the video that it's how it looks but it is a very advanced weathering uh, system and this gray i couldn't really figure out how to use it and once i started laying it down in the model and it kind of got on some spots it shouldn't have been on and then it dried i kind of saw what it was doing and it gave me an overall look of urban warfare and so this will also help blend in with any of the darker washes. What I'm doing here, guys, is I'm using a lot of the thinner and very little of the actual oil wash. And I'm just letting it go where it's going to go. Let it flow. Manipulate it with the brush. Just play with it for a minute. You've got plenty of work time here, especially when you're using the solvent. And we just wick, wick it away from some of the flatter bellies of these regions or the, or the, or the panels. Uh, just, you know, stay in motion. We've done this before, but this is the first time we're showcasing that multi-gray. We've been using multi-black like crazy. Multi-black is life. Hey, hey, look, multi-black. We're still going to use multi-black on this. Now, now that we've got all that gray laid in, let's pull some of these big regions like his cape, all that shit. Let's just hit him with a real quick wash because this is the system. When you go with the oil wash, you're, gonna, you're pursuing a bit of a grittier vibe, a little bit of more, more weathering, a little bit real so we're just going to get everything, get the contrast max, but I'm also going to carefully catch the reds and reintroduce some of the multi-black to some of the panel lines in the white armor. And what's awesome about it is since we already laid down the gray, it kind of blends in very naturally. The gray is not even totally dry yet. We're just a little bit of thinner. It's reactivating. They're going to blend together. You're going to see, look at this, how it just through capillary action just sucks itself all up in to those panel lines, looking its best, <clears throat> mingling with the gray, getting ourselves some really solid weathering and contrast. Those panel lines never look so good. Look at that shit, man. Mr. Hobby, ah, where you been my whole life? Now I do get these products from Spray Gunner, guys. Spraygunner.com, check them out. They are definitely the North American distributor of such fine products as multi-black. And you know, they got a big selection of Mr. Hobby stuff in general, so check them out. So as we move forward, we're going to have to start thinking about 
things like how we're going to highlight again because, you know, we did bring it to 11, then we washed it back down to 10. But I'm kind of feeling like I wanted to go back to 11. So these are all the kind of things that are going through my head while I'm doing this little system like this. I'm like, okay, you know, I have to redo some of these reds, make them pop a little bit. What are we going to do with the cape? You know, just get into the model, start planning the next step. Because I don't really plan ahead of time. I let where I'm at in the model kind of give me little tasks, you know. So next task, let's make, basically, let's make all this white look crisp again. We got to make the red look crisp again, the weapon, everything. So real quick, hit that cloak with that multi-black because that was actually just dark, dark gray. So it is going to get us something. It is going to get some more shadows. It's going to look its best here. Just going to stipple in some more righteous lines as we go. Just turn the speed up to gangster mode. Get the base. Just raw dog that oil wash over that resin base add-on from Gamer's Grass. <laughs> the ghetto. Keeping a gangster in the beat slab 24 hours a day. All right. Mr. Hobby Advanced Techniques. They sell these special conical cotton swabs. You dip it inside of some of the solvent and you use it very lightly and very ginger. And you just try to drag it across some of the flat areas that you don't maybe want some of the stain to be. What though, I mean, it's not very stained. It looks pretty good right now, but there are a few little flat areas that are maybe just slightly grayer than I want them to be. And this is gonna help pull them off. But I can't stress it enough, very light and gentle pressure with the Q-tip here. And we're just trying to revitalize some of the flat areas to brighten it back up. So I can erase our tool here, we're just editing. Making it look its absolute best, but it's become clear to me that we're gonna have to pull the paintbrush back out and really flip the script on some of these white panels and bring them up a notch. So it looks like it's dried up pretty good. I'm feeling it. Uh, and here we go. We're gonna pull out a shitty little 18 0 synthetic brush. I get these from like kingsart.com or something. They're like $3 each. They're terrible. They hold no moisture or anything. All they are is tiny. But if you are down to dip your paintbrush a whole bunch of times, you can get these really tiny, precise lines without any water kind of spreading it out. As long as you get the consistency right. So here we go. We're going to redo all of our lines with this tiny brush. And what we're trying to do is emphasize the preposterousness, the gleaming effect. We're bringing in that cling, that comic book style. So this is where our pure opacity is going to be. This is where our opaque white is going to live. And this is how we're gonna do our white scars. Our white scars are in the urban jungle, covered in that dust, that rubble, all of that, you know, war dust. Look at its absolute best, look at this guy. Hmm. Lots of little panels under the chest, some vents. Look at all this shit, man. Also, you may notice that this guy's head is the wrong head. I actually lost his head, so I just threw on a different dude's head. That might even be like the captain's head without like his top knot. I who fucking knows? <laughs> well, shit's ghetto. Just box it in the lines using really light brush pressure. Try to be semi-precise. Line shape is important to us. Let's just carve some in here in the field. Fake highlight 101. I always draw a line in the shoulder pad like that. I always usually divide the uh, elbows into a couple of different lines. I like to do some under highlighting on some of these control panels, some of these doodads always get around their mohawk as well just like the uh, shoulder pad really helps pop it out try to get the brow ridge sneak in there maybe catch the nose standard stuff wow but it's literally just adding to it we're just trying to make it look fabulous bring that drama back into this model easy steps to follow so far we're just gonna bring that bold power of red, just some standard bright red, thin it down and just kind of revitalize some of the reds because they got dusted down from that gray wash. Unfortunate side effect, I don't want the reds to be that dusty. So let's just amp it up, bring it back. Let's take my time. I do not want to get this red on that beautiful white. That would suck. There he goes, just you know, blaze into his knees, bring that back to life, just real thin, too easy. You know, we'll get the trim on the shoulder pad too. Don't worry about that. So we're going to use this technique I call tracing where we use the flat edge of my tiny paintbrush and I run it across the 90 degree angle of flat area and I create perfectly sharp highlights. This is really easy on a gun like this if you get the right angle. 
we're just using that cool gray and we're just gonna pop out some of those lines we want it to look a little shiny but we are trying to keep everything kind of that like tactical color you know he is a sniper wearing a bright white ceramite armor with red accents and the try to be somewhat hidden I guess <laughs> I don't I don't know what his deal is yeah he's uh, definitely good at being sneaky same deal right here just cut that magazine in make it look its best just add some shines minimal work for maximum effect guys we're just adding small lines not much you know we're not doing anything that is actually hard to do I'm even going to drag some highlights in on the cape. We're going to block these in. This is just that dark neutral gray mixed with a little of the cool gray. It's very, very thin. It's a big fat glaze. And what I'm doing is blocking in the highlights because I am going to paint a little bit of a ghetto highlight uh, camo effect here. But I want there to be some dimension in the fabric first. And I'm going to show you real quick. I'll work up. I just was looking at my wet palette and I was like, you know what? I got this bright green here. What if I mix this bright green with a little of our neutral gray? Right here. Kind of turn it into a bit of a drab. Maybe grab some of our cool gray. And maybe just, you know, kind of continue to green it up a little bit. That could be an interesting color. Now, all, all I'm going off of is my, my brain. I remember seeing on GW's website how they did theirs. And I'm going to just kind of remember it the best I can. And I think they were doing mostly just geometric shapes. And we're not going to go as hard as they did. We're going to do like one set of geometric shapes. We're not going to layer them. But these are a very drab olive. We're using the same colors actually that we used for the predominant part of this model. So I'm going very thin while I paint these geometric shapes on because I do want some of the undertones to poke through. And we're just kind of going with our heart here using kind of like triangles and, you know, <clears throat> I don't even know. What is that? Like a penta pentagram, pentagon. Octagon math. <laughs> I'm not a shape science. <laughs> Failed geometry. Geometry's doing with the shapes, right? These are triangles, son. And we're just going to cut them in, do our best, get the shapes, you know, reasonably sharp, but don't worry about it because there is a follow up step I like to do on stuff like this to sharpen them up. Just get them, you know, into a place that you're happy with. Here in the front, you know, don't overdo it. I'm just going to do like one big triangle, maybe one little triangle. And then just be called, call it a day right there. Pow. Just moving fast, trying to make it happen. Maybe wrap around the inner cape. Pow. There we go. Just a few you can see from the front. Too easy. See, as they dry, they look really interesting. Okay, now what we're going to do is go back a step, add some more of the brighter green to the mix with a little cool gray. And we're going to just start kind of carving in some highlights on the fabric. You know how we did earlier it's kind of poking through we're going to reinforce it but with this other color it's really going to start making these uh camo patterns a little bit more interesting if they get their own highlights now we're going to move a little bit forward on the project and i realize you know what we're going to box them out this is going to create little sharp lines now this might have nothing to do with camo i don't fucking know i'm not a camo scientist but i do know this looks cool if you start boxing them out starts breaking them up in interesting ways i like that because it makes them a little sharp. Pow, 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 pow. Yes, love it. I don't know if this would help. Uh, a bright white guy with uh, red accents hide in the jungle of the concrete city easier, but hey, we'll see. Just some basic stuff here, guys. Sharp lines, make them look their best. Keep it going. And we're just doing all that with a big fat number two. Just being delicate, light brush pressure. Being brave in the beat slab all day, every day. Looking beautiful. Now, oh, here's our other piece of bonus content. Rapid fire, three-step lens effect for beginners. Paint it red or any color. It could be blue. could be purple, green, whatever you want. Mix that color with a little black. So this is black red. And you just paint a line across the top. Keep it kind of thin as we always do. Before even any of that shit dries, wrist your brush off real quick, grab a little orange, right? Because we're doing red. It could be like white and purple, pink, whatever. And at the bottom of these lenses, just drop a couple little highlights, call it a day, three strokes, and done. Here he is. White scars, secretly easy with these ancient techniques. I hope maybe I taught you guys something here today. This is a 
beginner's workup that can be expanded upon in the meantime. Play on, players! If you like these tutorials, check out Next Level Painting on Patreon. Become a patron of the arts today. We offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels. Patreon is PayPal and credit card secure, so you don't have to worry about that. We use 100% of the money to improve our process.